Hello everyone. So, uh, welcome to the uh, fourth lecture of uh, nonlinear control. This is the final week of this course, and uh, we have been talking about control methods that um, allow for some kind of finite time convergence behavior. Yeah. So, uh, we've already covered. A decent bit of material on uh, finite time stability and finite time control design um, and we had just started off talking about sliding mode control so as we mentioned sliding mode control though has features of um, uh, finite time stability and control as you will see subsequently um, the way it is um, sort of posed is um, in the form of a variable structure controller and the primary requirement as we mentioned is for some kind of a disturbance rejection right so this is some kind of a lumped disturbance uh, lumped nonlinearity, if you may and uh, the aim for a or objective of a sliding mode control design is to develop this controller that uh, will actually help achieve asymptotic convergence or asymptotic stability um, while uh, there is a disturbance that is acting on the system okay and uh, the assumption is of course uh, that the disturbance is uniformly bounded for all time and uh, for all values of the state x1 x2 uh, potentially in some domain right now as you already mentioned um, it is a rather difficult uh, requirement to have un like bounded disturbances for all states uh, so even if you look at basic polynomial or even linear examples of such functions you will find that um, there is no um, boundedness for all values of states however one can always claim that in a compact set uh, of the states uh, this function this nonlinear function can be bounded and um, um, there are results which are more modern uh, in sliding mode theory uh, so this uh, sort of um, helps you to get uh, you know more advanced results in sliding mode but what we will look at uh, in this series of lectures is the more classical version where you are actually um, assuming uh, uniform boundedness on this uh, nonlinearity all right um, so this is the sort of um, double integrated type of a system that we start off with and we are looking to uh, design a sliding mode control now um, it's uh, if you look at a more basic um, asymptotic controller or basic asymptotically stabilizing controller these controls as you know and as we have been studying until now will uh, typically uh, ignore these kind of disturbances and so your control will typically be designed as u is um, minus k1 x1 minus k2 x2 for some positive gain k1 k2 right and this uh, in the absence of disturbance obviously will drive your um, uh, states to zero um, however in the presence of disturbance you would expect uh, something like a oscillatory behavior right i mean you'll expect that uh, you will get some kind of a residual set kind of a behavior you will never expect you will never get to exact conversion so that's the whole point no exact convergence in the presence of these disturbance functions right so uh, then the question is what more can be done okay so uh, first 
is uh, we introduce a, a sort of a nice differential equation if you may that we want to follow right uh, so that's what we say we um, um, you know we, we introduce what we typically call as a sliding mode uh, but we'll define these things a little bit later but um, suppose we want uh, some kind of a compensated dynamics and this is essentially desired right this is essentially desired this is not actually the case but this is actually a desired dynamics and we say this is x1 dot plus cx1 equal to zero for some positive c and it's easy to see easy to understand that um, this quantity is actually x2 itself because of how our dynamics is right so therefore that's how it's chosen so this is actually x2 plus cx1 and what one can also understand from here is that uh, from from here it's evident that um, x1 goes to 0 exponentially okay? which means x2 also goes to 0 exponentially okay? so that's sort of what we understand so this uh, if you are able to follow this kind of a dynamics even in the presence of disturbance f um, you understand that this uh, will guarantee asymptotic convergence of both states x1 and x2 right so we call this sort of a function as sigma x1 x2 and you can see it is usually a function of all the states so both states in this case And uh, this is what is called a sliding mode. Yeah, essentially, what does it do? It it it, it um, gives you a for this two-dimensional system right? because you have two states. Yeah, for this two-state system, we reduce the evolution to a single uh, a one-dimensional line, right? Because x two plus c x one is a straight line in the state space in the phase plane right? it's a straight line in the phase plane right? so i hope that's clear right something like x2 plus cx1 i can even draw something like this right uh, let's say here right so x2 plus cx1 equal to zero would be uh, something like this right so this is what will be yeah it's a straight line passing through zero right so this is what is the uh, sliding surface so depending on um, uh, whatever the value of c is the inclination of this line may change and so on but essentially that's what it is all right so this is what is a uh, sort of a sliding mode if you may right um, now, uh, how do we ensure that our system follows this? So first we write, um, apologies, first we actually write the dynamics of the sliding variable, right, sigma, right. So, so what is sigma dot, yeah, and so what is sigma dot? It is x2 dot plus cx1 dot and x2 dot from our dynamics is just this guy right it's u plus f x1 x2 comma t plus c x2 because x1 dot is in fact x2 right and you have some sigma 0 equal to um, sigma sub 0 right so you now are working with a different looking dynamics. I mean, you're just working with the sigma dynamics, right? And now our aim is to push the sigma dynamics to zero, right? That's what we want to do. So aim push sigma to zero, right? Because if sigma is going to zero, you understand that x1 and x2 are both going to zero, 
all right so so what we will try to do is we'll try to make sigma go to zero in finite time right so how do we do that we take a v which is half sigma square and we get a v dot which is sigma sigma dot which is nothing but sigma u plus f x1 x2 t plus c x2 right now i hope you understand that this disturbance is obviously a disturbance so it's not known to us so it's not like you can cancel it using the control however we can certainly cancel this guy right we can certainly cancel this guy so what is it that we want to be uh, you already know that uh, uh, you know you you uh, you want to have something like a you want to follow uh, from our finite time stability what do you want you want for finite time convergence you want v dot plus k v to the power alpha less than equal to zero so i mean and you can choose alpha to be anything right you can choose alpha to be anything that's our call right but alpha has to be within zero one and k has to be positive right? that's our requirement so based on that if i actually just uh, try to substitute that here uh, what i would do is i would um, simply uh, uh, try to choose u as minus cx2 plus some v yeah some small v right which we don't know yet okay so if i do that then what do i get i'll add a page here right then what do i get i get um, v dot so v was half sigma squared let's remember and v dot is um, sigma times um, v plus f x1 x2 t right now we'll do a little bit of an inequality right um, we already know that this is going to be less than or equal to absolute value of sigma absolute value of v plus uh, absolute value of sigma absolute value of x x1 x2 t and we know that this is less than or equal to l right we know this is less than or equal to l so what do we do uh, so we know that this is less than or equal to absolute value of sigma times absolute value of small v this additional control plus l all right plus l okay so so now what do i do what do i how do i work this out uh, how i work this out is i take my v as the small v that you have here as some rho sine function of sigma right or also written as uh, rho signum of sigma okay so sigma is just the sine function it is um, so signum of x to 1 for x greater than 0 minus 1 x less than 0 and obviously 0 when x is 0 right uh, no actually this is fine and signum 0 is can be anything in the minus 1 1 range yeah so signum of 0 can be anything in this range all right so uh, 
if we take actually as minus rho yeah then what we, we get is v dot is equal to uh, absolute value of sigma times rho uh, let's see if I want to do this I think I probably jumped a few steps ahead uh, and I probably did not need to do that uh, what we will do is we will choose the v in advance here and these I think I will move to later yeah all right so yeah so basically yeah basically what we are doing is we are actually selecting the uh, v term first right we actually select the v term first right and what happens is when i substitute this in the v dot uh, what i will get from here is v dot is um, minus rho times sigma times signum of sigma plus uh, sigma times f x1 x2 t and this quantity sigma times sine signum sigma is already equal to the absolute value of sigma okay, this is what we are yeah this is what we want to use that sigma multiplied by sine of sigma is actually the absolute value of sigma itself right um, so what we have here um, I think I can erase these safely and redo this again so this is v dot is now I do the bounding it's because this remain the first term remains the same minus rho absolute value of sigma okay, plus sigma times l why because absolute value of f less than or equal to l and so there will be a absolute value of sigma here as well so now if i take the absolute value of sigma common then this is uh, absolute value of sigma with a negative sign rho minus l okay. so this is v dot so if i take rho as um, well i mean for example as equal to l plus 2 then v dot turns out to be minus ah sorry l plus half turns out to be minus half absolute value of sigma right and that's basically saying that this is uh, v dot is less than or equal to minus um, let's see let's see let's be careful here i'm going to be very careful here one over root two and one over root two and this is minus v to the power half right okay and this is very similar right to what we wanted right uh, if i take k equal to one so same as finite time convergence with k equal to one and alpha equals half right so we are allowed to choose alpha anything from zero to one therefore we've chosen alpha equal to half and k equal to one so obviously we have finite time convergence so we know that 
the sigma dynamics converges to zero in finite time right so sigma goes to zero in finite time and the cool thing is in the this happens in the presence of disturbance all right so you have actually rejected the disturbance why do i say it happens in the presence of disturbance because we did not neglect the disturbance in the analysis we actually put in a term that is the rho has this l value which is basically going to uh, compensate for the disturbance yeah so we have something that compensates for the disturbance using the bound itself all right so we have a disturbance compensated uh, convergence right and that's pretty interesting that's very interesting okay so so what is our control now so our actual control is u is if you may it was um, uh, here let's see yeah the control was here right it's minus cx2 plus v and v is chosen uh, in this way right so therefore our control is minus cx2 minus rho signum sorry rho signum of uh, sigma so that is x2 plus cx1 right right all right so that's the control and as you can see um, the control has a uh, switching on the sliding surface right i hope you understand that this control switches on either side of the sliding surface so so um, how the how will this work this will be actually evaluate to equal to um, minus c x2 minus rho um, when x2 plus c x1 is positive and this will evaluate to minus c x2 plus rho when sigma is x2 plus c x1 is negative all right so there is actually a switching across this sliding surface and there's a switching along the sliding surface so the sigma equal to x2 plus c x1 equal to zero is actually the sliding surface so there is a switching sort of a thing happening okay so therefore uh, you can imagine you can imagine that um, what will happen is um, you know if you look at the plot for example right what you will see is the sliding variable of course right will behave uh in a very very nice way right i mean it will it will actually um converge in, in finite time right i mean it will just do this it will just do this and right? beyond some finite time uh, your sigma will converge right? okay so you expect some really nice plots on the sigma variable um however uh and and similarly i mean x1 x2 is obviously converging asymptotically right converging asymptotically so so this this uh, sort of uh, if you may the time right in which uh, uh, in which you have uh, in which you have basically this reaching yeah so this until this time my apologies is called the reaching phase and this beyond this is called the sliding phase okay 
Now the problem with this controller is pretty obvious. Right? The problem with this controller is pretty obvious. Um, because of the disturbance, I mean, if you look at this uh, sort of a plot on what happens, um, you know, um, very close to the sliding surface, right? So you will start to see some kind of a zigzag motion happening, right? So, so this is the sliding surface. I mean, we already know that it probably looks apologies you already know that it looks something like this right so that's the sliding surface and there is of course i mean this is uh, x1 this is x2 there is a sort of a uh, sliding phase sorry a, a, a reaching phase which is finite time and then there is a sliding phase yeah yeah but this is there is small zigzag things here yeah there is small zigzag things here right? um, why because um, what what will sort of happen is that um, you have because of the presence of disturbances what happens is uh, and you are not exactly compensating for the disturbances as, as you notice right i mean you what you're trying to do is you're simply dominating them in some sense using this l right and the disturbances are bounded by l so it's not like you're at every instant in time you're exactly cancelling the disturbances no you're not you cannot do that because you don't know the value of disturbances to do that so what happens is once you get to this sort of place where you're on the sliding surface uh, what tends to happen is you will get thrown out of the sliding surface a little bit right and then you will uh, and then the control loss switches right i mean the sig you will go from one side of sliding surface to another side another side to one and so you tend to do a lot of these high frequency switches why because your control law is uh, in in the finite time uh, convergence kind of idea at sigma equal to zero, the control uh, is not Lipschitz, right? It's not smooth, right? So there's some high frequency activity happening. Uh, so that's exactly the thing here. Here, the sigma equal to zero is essentially the sliding surface. So on the sliding surface, you have non-smooth behavior. And because in this case, the sliding surface is not actually the origin of or the equilibrium of the system. So you are still moving on the sliding surface. It's not like you go to the sliding surface and you stop, right? You continue to move and there is disturbance so what happens is you tend to overshoot undershoot and there's a lot of these high frequency chatter happening because of the non lipschitz nature of the control this is this is actually uh, this phenomenon is actually termed as chattering and in fact uh, the control also Right? The control also in the same um, sort of timeline. I mean, if you see, the control will be really nice. Yeah, sigma, comma, if I put the control as well. And this is the sigma. And also the control here. So the control looks really nice here. But then, um, once you reach this place, it will be oscillating very fast. Yeah, there will be very high frequency oscillations. In fact, I'm making it very nice and clean. It will be much worse than this. Yeah, and this is a, a phenomenon that is not particularly great, right? So, so the problem is um, in first order sliding mode. Why is it first order sliding mode? Um, first order means. sliding surface is one dimensional okay first order sliding mode leads to chattering
okay and though there is disturbance rejection and a lot of these nice properties this is not considered a particularly nice property to have okay so what we want to look at is uh, what one can do about avoiding the chattering phenomenon okay and that's what we will look at in the subsequent lecture